Well, I see we have some viewers, and good morning to Rock Island Sound Morning Music Live with Westchester Children's Museum. I hope I worded that correctly. So it's a beautiful day outside. I hope later on you get to go out. It looks very nice. Please make sure you wear your masks. My name is Alan Lighty. I'm a guitar instructor with Rock Island Sound. And Rock Island Sound is pairing up with Westchester Children's Museum to give you these morning musical mornings. And every morning we do something a little different. So I hope I get this right. <laughs> Monday violin. Tuesday is vocals with Rachel. Wednesdays, I believe, is drums percussion. Thursday, where to me, and tomorrow, Friday, Rachel will be doing another voice lesson. So please tune in. All these are very informative. Today, we're going to talk about the blues. So I don't want to get into too much history, but it's critical with modern day guitar playing. So there are many, many different styles of blues playing, many different techniques, but there's certain things that hold it all together. And one of those is the emotion and the rhythm. So I'm gonna go uh, let you know that there's, if we break down music, there's what I call five parameters. Now that's a big word. So basically I mean five parts to music what make what makes music like if we're baking a cake well we need flour we need yeast we need whatever butter vanilla to make music you need rhythm rhythm is the most important thing without rhythm nothing happens we have pitch pitch means what note what string when it comes to guitar like what string or what note are we playing color color is would it be a violin would it be a trumpet on the guitar if it's an electric guitar you have little knobs that change the tone on acoustic guitar if you play there or up here it has a different sound it has what we call a different color okay and then there is volume which means how loud how soft we don't want everything to just be the same all the time. Sometimes you want to play loud, and sometimes you want to play less. It depends on the song. This is how you get your creative self to come out through music. And that is one of the coolest things about music, is that you get to be creative. And particularly with the blues, it's all about creativity, about not playing things the same way. It's about the emotional content that's in the song. Now, there's a lot of historic stuff I could go into with the blues. It's deeply rooted in African American history. I mean, it's where people bared their souls. A lot of times the lyrics are about misery. And if you want to get into this further and deeper, Call up Rock Island Sound. They're doing classes, summer classes, individual lessons. There's all kinds of things if you wanted to pursue this. With all that said, let me start with this guitar, which is standard steel string guitar. I'm using a finger pick, which is made of metal. If you can see that, and I have a plastic thumb pick. So one of the keys to playing the blues is to get a bass line going. Remember, these players that started to play the blues and guitar were not very well off. They didn't, they had to work all the time for their money. So their instruments were like little pianos to them. They could play more than one voice at once. So we're gonna talk about like the single bass line. So it's just a repeated bass line. Call that the monotonic bass. I know it's a big word, but it just means you're playing the same note over and over again. And then they'll put some kind of music on top. They'll put a melody on top. So let me just demonstrate that for you. So if I just keep playing that one note over 
and over, it could get a little boring. So you can use your right hand to control the string. So just listen how I'm going to put my palm down as I play the note, and then I'm going to pick my palm up a little bit, and you will hear a difference. That is a change in the color of the sound. It's like deadened. It's like I'm controlling. Now here I lift it up. Put it back down. So once you establish your rhythm, and remember rhythm is the most important element part of music, then you can bring in something on top. So there I basically repeated the same melody three times and that's kind of how a lot of music particularly the blues is they will give you a little what we call a cell or an idea and then they will expand on that the musical term would be development so i mean a, a good analogy would be if if we ever had winter again and we had snow you go out and you build a little bit of a snowman and then if you add a little bit more on later in the day and then you add a little bit more and what you started out with just something small becomes something big and elaborate and that's kind of the way music works in general so we take an idea in this case it's just that one bass note and then we add a melody Now, what did I do after I played that note? When I got here, I was... That is called vibrato. Vibrato is a form of articulation. Not only was vibrato articulation, and I know that's a big word, it's a slide. So you would go from one note and slide up to another note or slide down. So that's, these slides were very important in blues playing. And there's also a bend. So a bend, let me use this if I can, I'm using the same song, which is called Baby Please Don't Go. It's a very famous song. The next note is here. It doesn't sound that great if I just go. But if I bend that note, and that bend, if you had a piano, like the one behind me there, it's kind of like a note that's in between the keys. It's kind of like on the cracks. It's not quite one note, and it's not quite another note. So just listen for that. It's... like a moan. It's almost like a moan. Get that rolling and then you can put a melody on the top. So that's a slide. It means you're, you're going up into a pitch. These are elements of the blues music that make it the blues music. And all of these things would be used in their singing of songs, <clears throat> but I'm not a blues singer. It takes a certain person, <laughs> it takes a certain vocal chord setting and a certain person to be able to really sing the blues. You might be a great singer, but it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to sing the blues. <laughs> So let me just play through this song real quick. I'll play through one verse. I picked up tempo here, so tempo means I'm a little faster.
through that song, I had some kind of driving bass line. I had some kind of driving rhythm. And that is very crucial to the blues. You have to feel that rhythmic beat. So that was monotonic bass, meaning that you just have one steady bass note. There are types of blues music where you would have an alternating bass. So. So right here, I'm playing from the sixth string up to the fourth string. So instead of everything being just playing that one string, I'm playing two strings and it gives it a different color, a different depth, a little different feeling. finger on the second string to bend that note so you should be able to see it in here and I'm doing the first thing I'm doing is what we call a hammer on meaning you're hammering a finger down on the string so we're hitting the string once but we're getting two notes for just hitting the string once so this little it's just one chord there's nothing really fancy about this. One chord. So hammer on, then the bend. So there's two points of articulation. I know it's a big word. get kind of a nice it just like lays the background that you could sing on top of listen to listen to how complex this is one chord I have like three different layers three different voices I have the low bass I have the middle bass and then I have a melody on top and I can separate those bass notes by dampening they call it palm muting because you're taking your palm and you're lightly muting touching the string I can make it so it's like two voices that they really stand apart. So here we go. So just, I'm going to play this a few times or just give it a listen. You tell me. Now look, I hear more than three voices. If anybody wants to guess, and you kids out there, how many voices, how many different parts do you hear off of just that one chord? Well, I kind of hear four. I've got the muted bass, I've got the second bass, I've got the hammer on part, okay? And then I have the two upper strings with their melody. And the formula for a lot of blues music is what we call the 12 bar blues. So you can use that formula, so to speak, and keep the formula structure and then change anything you would like. So in a 12 bar blues, this particular case, this is what we call an E chord. We just give them letter names so that we can talk to other people and seem like we really know what we're talking about. But the E chord, we would play that four times. Then we would go to the next chord. In this case, it would be the A chord. We would play that two times. Then we would go back to the E chord where we started, pretty much play the same music. We would do that twice. So if we add that up for all the kids out there, four plus two 
plus 2 equals 8. So that gives us four more measures to work with. And they would usually be, in this case, the A chord, and then you would go to the B chord for one measure, and then back to where you started for two measures. So that means eight measures of a 12 bar blues are pretty much the same harmony, very similar in music, and what makes it happen is what comes out of you comes out of your soul. You have to convince people. You have to play musically. And to play musically means you have to practice. And practicing and repetition, I just showed you there's repetition in a 12-bar blues. So you have to do that if you want to play a musical instrument. But I can tell you there's nothing more rewarding than learning to play an instrument. There's I could give you a hundred reasons, but I'm not going to waste the time right now. So, we've gone over some of the parameters, which is a big word. Parts. Parts of music. What makes music. And in the following lessons, I believe I have four more lessons, I will utilize those to help get you acquainted with them in a musical way. It's nothing to be afraid of. If we use a big word... It's just somebody that was really smart trying to label something. So instead of making it easy, sometimes things make it hard. Now, I talked about slides and pull-offs and stuff. There is one kind of music that is very much related to the blues. Now, I went over a couple of guitars last week. I don't believe I showed you this guy. This is an arch top guitar the camera right because the top of the guitar is not flat it has a curve it has an arch to it and this design of guitar just like the blues is a very American music okay I mean it's about as American Americana music the blues is the king so this particular type of guitar is kind of based off of the violins and the fiddles it has the F holes here. They look, I don't know if you can see them because everything's black. But it's very similar to the construction in a way of a violin. And violin makers were the first people to make this particular type of guitar. Now, with that other guitar, that was what we call standard tuning. I mean, it's, it's what most guitars are tuned to. But the blues players, they weren't the greatest of technical musicians but they were they could really play with emotion and sing with emotion so what they would do is they would try to make their playing technique as simple as possible so that they could just concentrate on singing and getting their message across and usually it was a message of misery and angst and sorrow and having your woman leave you i mean things there are very few blues tunes that are happy and, and upbeat, and that's just the way it was, because life for these musicians was not an easy life. Okay? So this particular guitar, I have this tuned to what we call an open tuning, and that means it's already tuned to a chord. So if I just strum down... G chord and what they would use a lot of times is what they call a slide and I just put it on my finger but I'm going to take it off so a slide they could be in metal different types of metal they could be glass slides it's basically like a tube and what they used to do is they would take the neck off of a glass bottle like a soda bottle and they would file it down a little bit and they would use that to play guitar. Here's a different one. They come in all shapes and sizes and they all produce a little bit of a different sound. This one is actually a wrench. So some people would take like a socket wrench end and they would use that. But the cool thing 
with the slide is you get to start at one place and slide to another. So just like I did the slide with my finger and the pick on the other guitar, this takes slide playing to a whole nother level. Make doing a slide, which is remember articulation. It's a big word, but it's not that difficult to understand. So what they would normally do would be establish a rhythm again. So I'm playing, I'm looking at my time here, monotonic bass, cool sound it's like it's very hard to describe now that I'm just thinking about it but it, it's supposed to sound like the moaning or the wailing of either an animal or a human being or just sheer it's to represent sheer emotion so and they all and they try to get it so it sounds like you're singing it has a very vocal quality to it so let me try this again okay. So I'm establishing a rhythm. I'm just, I'm just laying down on these bass strings. I don't have to worry about hitting a wrong string because they're all tuned to a chord and a chord is going to sound good no matter like what note I hit here. I can't hit, if I hit a wrong string, the note is part of the chord. So let me just establish this for you. And again, if you want to learn anything about this blues stuff, Contact Rock Island Sound. They've got summer classes, backyard stuff. They got all kinds of cool stuff going since everything's opening up. And I trust you. Trust me and I trust them that they will be safe as far as the COVID and everything. We're not going to push the envelope there. So here is our rhythm. Now I'm going to bring in the slide. example of the slide guitar and that is very much the blues so as I'm coming to end here I will play I'll continue with this guitar because it's kind of cool and a lot of the kids might not have ever actually heard slide guitar before and as I said the slides come in metal brass I'm sure they make all kinds of it's whatever the sound is that you like so a good analogy be, would be like a hamburger. Some people like hamburgers with ketchup. Some people like hamburgers with whatever. You make it your own. You can take the slide, the particular part of the slide you use, the tip or what finger you put it on. These are all aspects of playing the slide. So just remember um, we're doing this every every day of the week I think through the end of July and we have different instructors that are all great 
um, different instruments will be going over. So I, I'm going to repeat it in case you tuned in late. Monday, violin. Tuesday, voice with Rachel. And I'm sorry, I don't remember everybody's name, but percussion, trumpet, Wednesdays, Thursdays, you get me. And then tomorrow, Friday at 9.30, you get Rachel again, okay? So let me just play you out here for a little bit because we're running out of time. So I'll play this. And look, I'm just making this up. That's part of the blues is the freedom of improvisation, okay? So here we go. Remember, I'm going to repeat a couple things. Please be safe when you're out there. Wear your mask, okay? Be smart so we can get through this. I'm establishing a bass. It's like a monotonic, just like a little thump. Doesn't have to be a pitch or clean. I'm just getting a rhythm. One, two. Westchester Children Museum, Rock Island Sound. Have a safe and wonderful day, everybody. And please take care. <laughs>